this is from your country and it's been a long time coming, but better late than never. It says hymen repair surgery and virginity testing to be banned in UK. Oh, this is fab news. This is great so, stuff. Do you want to read that? Yeah, sure. The government is planning on banning a cosmetic surgery called hymenoplasty across the UK. It attempts to recreate a woman's hymen, which in some cultures is linked to virginity and has been described as a form of honor-based abuse, which it most definitely is. The procedure will be criminalized as well as virginity testing. Yes, this is really, really good. Um, Minister for Care and Mental Health, Julian Keegan, said the government was committed to safeguarding vulnerable women and girls in this country. Hymenoplasty is available in clinics and can cost up to three grand. The procedure recreates a thin membrane known as the hymen, which partially covers the entrance to the vagina. It's often done as a, as a way to repair a hymen. But the WHO says the appearance of a hymen is not a reliable indication of intercourse. Are you listening? All of the Islamic weddings that stop until they've done this test and got results. This is what they need to read. A woman's hymen exactly can tear for all sorts of reasons and not just through sexual intercourse. For instance, through playing sports, using tampons, riding a bike, going horse riding, any of these things. The practice of hymenoplasty is linked to conservative cultures which place a high value on virginity with the expectation a virgin should bleed after sex on her wedding night. Some mother-in-laws, I, I honestly shit yeah. you not, they actually check to see if there's blood on the sheets. They should, they um, check the bed sheet, and, which, yeah. which is common. I've seen that in Game of Thrones as well. They, it's a, wow. it, it just basically tells you that it's an old practice, but it's still a current practice in in these Muslim countries because they because not only the husband needs to know that you know his now wife or the future mother of his kids uh, has never fooled around basically. So not only just husband needs to know, but the entire family needs to know. He's, yeah, because you don't marry just the man; you marry the whole family in yeah. these cultures. So yeah. and in any culture, I guess. But they put you, that the burden would, is yeah. Yeah, but you would think that is such a private matter. It's exactly. such a private matter. Like, I, I, I would and, feel. And why is that a pre the, the notion that that is even a premise to go? You know, it is ridiculous that that it needs to be based on that condition. All things being equal, if you bleed, this can work. I would, I would feel, you know, the, 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 and especially for a woman as well, especially if she's, if she, if she is conditioned to think uh, to think of these matters as a matter of her honor. Like, I mean, I, as a man who's not conditioned to think of my physical body parts as a, as somehow matter of my honor or my manhood, unless I didn't have my penis like that guy that Ali was sent to behead by Muhammad. <laughs> yeah, so, which was most likely cut off, probably. Yeah. And not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah to, 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 to safeguard Straight women. Him, um, yeah. yeah so, so, so even as a guy, I would feel so naked and I would not want that. But for a woman who's conditioned who's told it's ingrained in her that you you know this this is a very private matter you must chast your you, you you must protect your chastity and you know all of those things and then for her to see this and most of these girls are kuwari girls you know like these are 17 18 they don't know anything they've only seen their mothers and brothers and now all of a sudden they adopt this new family they go there it's already intimidating to move in a house with his entire her entire in-laws and the next day she comes out and the bleeding. just imagine what would happen to those girls there's one one ex-muslim girl she told me her story she said that in even in pakistan what they do they there is a little uh, some sort of a cylinder or something so some little plastic little bag or something so what they do they insert there in their vaginas in their on um, uh, on the wedding nights so when they have a, an, an intercourse uh, you know it just that little balloon kind of thing it just bursts inside and it just it creates fake blood and the husband oh. thing mm, okay uh -huh. yes so your fake blood uh, no no well he doesn't know his fake blood so they do that yeah. just to fool them girls because, in Arab countries also find try and find ways like that because it's not only the fact that she she might have done something but it's also what if i don't bleed like yeah. what if she doesn't bleed yeah. like imagine for the rest of her life this guy is always gonna you know just her husband is always gonna throw that in his, in her face that you are not even a virgin you're a loose woman blah 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 how many fights are gonna happen at some point it's gonna cross the line and who knows yeah, no, it's a, it's such a horribly invasive 
pro the whole thing, the concept of it. And like you're saying, it is very, it's a very outdated notion anyway now. And it doesn't like, it doesn't even hold up. There's probably been instances where a pregnant woman can have an intact hymen, you know? So this, this, this whole concept is bullshit. I'm really, really glad. Should we, do you want to read the rest of the article? Yeah, so the WHO says virginity testing is practiced in at least 20 countries. It involves an intrusive uh, vaginal examination to check if the hymen is intact. Alina, whose name we've changed, said she was raped and then as a teenager faced years of pressure from her family to get the procedure. It wasn't something I felt imagine, like... Imagine that. Imagine if you've been raped or gone through some kind of sexual harassment or sexual violence in your past. And that's the reason you can't bleed and the expectation, you don't bleed and the expectation is still on you and you can't even be open enough with your family to, do you know what I mean? There's so many different layers of so many situations that this is just horrible on the um, psyche of any woman to go through, especially mm. if there's something you face, tra like something traumatic. And that's the reason that holding you back from doing this, which you shouldn't even be in a position compelled to do in the first place. But imagine the mental like stress that this Alina woman must have gone through. Yeah, it wasn't something I felt like I had a choice over. She said it was always put on me as if there was this was the only option. And this is something you can you can do to fit back in. I yeah. felt very, very alone. I feel I felt guilty if I didn't if I didn't do it. I felt it was a very big weight on my shoulders. I didn't feel like I had a choice. Alina said she refused to have the surgery, but the pressure continued. In order to escape the situation, she married someone who did not care that her hymen was not intact. So, so well, there are some good men out there. Good lad, yeah. She said she is proud. Um, she had the courage to not, not to go through, to not go yeah, through. Yeah, you go, with girl. I knew that I made the right choice and I knew everything that my parents were saying was only for pressure and their honor. Yes. I just, um, I mean, like, this is such a, such a welcome and good development and I would say better late than never in this situation. Mm. But I'm also slightly worried if this is going to, as a practice now, go underground, which us is usually what happens. Um, usually what happens, yeah. Yeah. So in the same way where we see if they ban FGM and then, you know, there's some horrible, dodgy backstreet clinics you can go to or like Muslim doctors on the side will say, by the way, I also offer this. Um, I hope that in these bubbles where large Muslim communities live, that this doesn't like pop up as an underground thing now, because that's just going to make it even worse and even more dangerous and even more intrusive. And there's no there's no other side of things to hear do you know what i mean because you're surrounded by those people pressured into it and now you're going to these dodgy checkups and hymen hymenoplasty surgeries that are being done by somebody who's just jumped on the bandwagon because they think this is part of their faith and culture and honor mm. if you like these videos and want to support me in my activism then you can support me on patreon or paypal stay free everyone mm.